Hey AI art enthusiast, welcome back to Skinker. So today we're gonna dive deep into the recently released stable cascade model in Automatic 11.11. We're gonna explore it completely and see how it competes with the previous models of stable diffusion. All right, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, so we'll get started all with stable cascade in our Automatic 11.11. And this is basically the kind of interface where you can see we are in stable cascade, right? So we have few of the options over here so very intuitive interface so first of all you have the option to input your prompt then the negative prompt, and then we have the parameters which are width height cfg steps steps decoder batch size and seat right so you know very uh, little options but please uh, don't get into that because this model right here can create insanely realistic images right so if you go to uh, this blog right here, so you're saying Stable Cascade is the latest image generation model that is 243 times better than STXL in terms of aesthetic quality. So this is uh, what is the highlight of the new release Stable Cascade. So you're saying with Stable Cascade, you can generate even more beautiful pictures with shorter prompts and shorter in friends time. So this is uh, basically the latest AI image generation model from Stability AI based on version architecture. The model is extremely easy to run and train consumer grade hardware. So this is basically, you know, the highlight. It is very simple, very easy to use, yet it can create insanely realistic images way, way much better than the previous Stable Diffusion Axle, okay? So it's saying it surpasses Stable Diffusion Axle by 1.4 billion parameters, right? So yeah, I'm really, really excited to test this out and see how it goes, right? Okay, so before getting started, we need to type in our prompt and, you know, again, we need to find out what will be the prompt formula for Stable Cascade. So yeah, as per uh, my testing, the prompt formula is gonna be the same. So first of all, you need to type in your subject, then action, then camera specifications. After that, image quality. Then you need to provide some of the image characteristics, then details, and then lastly, the objects, all right? So yeah, uh, by following that, I'm gonna go ahead and type in my first prompt by keeping in mind my prompt formula, okay? Okay, so this is my first prompt. A busy farmer's market on a sunny day. Photo taken at eye level DSLR, ultra quality, sharp focus. So this prompt right here has everything that I need to have in my prompt formula, which are subject, action, camera specifications, image quality, image characteristic, details, and object, right? And after that, now comes the negative prompt. So as you guys saw our last video, I told you like negative prompts are really, really important. It is basically, you know, giving it a description of what you don't want to see in the picture. Like you can see, uh, there's a prompt of friendly golden retriever playing in a lush, vibrant, spacious, serene. And in that, we have some kind of a deformation, you can say, an extra leg in that. And just by providing the negative prompt, now our picture is good to go, okay? So negative prompts are basically for every kind of images. Like you can see for realistic images, for anime style, for landscapes, for human portraits, like each and everything. But you know, I'll make your life a lot easier by giving you guys a universal negative prompt. So this negative prompt right here will basically work for every kind of image that you're working on. Like let's just say you're working on human portraits, realistic images, abstract art, any one of that. So this whole prompt detailed in negative prompt right here is gonna work for everything, okay? So yeah, uh, by following that, I'm gonna copy this, paste it into my negative prompt option right over here. And now comes our parameters. So first of all, we have width and height. So width and height basically refer to the dimensions of the output. So if you want to go ahead and create these kind of images like the full screen images, so for that, uh, the width and height are gonna be 1536 and 1280. And that's exactly what I did in my stable cascade. Then comes the CFG. So CFG basically uh, refers to the configuration settings for the model. So this can vary depending on the image. So if you're working on human portraits, as I told you guys in the previous studio, so it'll be like in between two and three. If you're working on landscapes, 3D renders, it'll be four. So you know, we're gonna go ahead and tweak this as per liking as we move forward in the video. Then comes the steps. So steps are basically, you know, it basically shows how many steps are involved in the image. So these are the prior ones. These are the decoder ones, so you need to make sure you have these numbers for the prior and decoder steps, then the batch size. So this is gonna tell like how many images you want for your each prompt, and then comes the seed value. So this, you can go ahead and choose any random one uh, depending upon your picture, okay? So first of all, let's just go ahead and generate our first from of a busy farmer's market and see how it looks like with this negative prompt and with this parameter, okay? Okay, so it's generating, and if you take a look like the generation speed is pretty nice. So it's taking only few seconds to generate the image. We are halfway done. 
All right, here we go. So if I can go ahead and open this in full screen. So yeah, as you guys can see, this image looks really, really good. Like the focus, the everything looks really, really fantastic. But I think the exposure is a bit high, right? So no problem. We can adjust it by, uh, you know, just decreasing our CFG value to let's just go ahead and do uh, three. Okay, now let's just go ahead and generate this. Or you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it two. Uh, to be more uh, precise, I'm going to generate this once again and see how my app is going to look like. All right, guys, now take a look at this image. Wow, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I was looking for. So busy farmer's market on a sunny day. Photo taken at eye level DSLR ultra quality. So take a look at the fruits, uh, the vegetables and the people. Like, wow, these look absolutely fantastic. So that's exactly what I was talking about. How stable a uh, cascade surpasses the stable diffusion excellent previous model like this image is absolutely fantastic i haven't seen uh any good image than this through any of the ai image generators okay so now comes the fun part we'll be exploring uh this tool a bit more and more and now i'm gonna go ahead and create some photorealistic as well as human portraits landscapes 3d renders abstract arts anime characters all of this from this stable cascade model to see how well it performs, okay? All right, so before jumping into that, I really wanna talk about another very cool feature of stable cascade where now you can basically write tags in your images as well. Like you can create images that has tags in that. So that is really cool. All right, so for that, let's just say I go ahead and type in my prompt like a boy wearing a hat holding a sign which says smile, okay? And this will be my negative prompt. And if I can go ahead and generate the image. So yeah, as you guys can see, uh, this is the image that I got for my prompt, a boy wearing a hat, carrying a smile sign. So yeah, uh, this is how you can go ahead and create images that has text in stable cascade now, all right? So first of all, let's just go ahead and jump to our photorealistic images. So for the first example for the prompt, I'm going to go ahead and say a bustling airport terminal photo taken during peak hours at DSLR ultra quality, sharp focus, tag sharp, and all those important details like the importance of uh, elements that should be there in a prompt, specifically in stable diffusion models, okay? And the negative prompt, obviously we're using the universal one, so it's going to be the same. And for the CFG value, I think the realistic images to CFG is absolutely fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and increase my batch size to two because I want to create two images now. Let's just go ahead and generate this now and see how it looks. All right, so our image is done and we have uh, two variations for the images. So let's just go ahead and see those. All right, so first one, we have a bustling airport terminal photo taken from uh, during peak hours. And for that, these images look really, really good, right? And if I see my next image, and yeah, this image uh, looks pretty handsome as well. I think just we need to tweak our CFG value a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and increase that to three, generate it once again, and now let's just see how my image is gonna turn out, okay? All right, so now it's much better, right? So our image for uh, the bustling airport terminal is ready. And yeah, for that, these images look absolutely perfect, right? Like take a look at this one. Yeah, this is really, really good, right? Okay, so now let's just go ahead and create some human portraits. I'm really excited for that and see how it turned out. So yeah, for that, for my example of the prompt, I'm gonna go ahead and say, a young girl playing violin engrossed in her music, DSLR quality and all those elements. Negative prompt is gonna be obviously the same. And for the CFG, I'm gonna go ahead and increase that to four because I think that will be, uh, you know, much better. And then the other one, uh, the bad size is good, steps are good. Let's just go ahead and generate this and see how our image is going to turn out. All right, so our images are ready. Let's just go ahead and explore those. I'm going to go ahead and open this on full screen. So yeah, wow, like take a look at the results. This is absolutely fantastic. Like check out the detail, the guitar strings, uh, the hair, the everything, the lighting. This looks really, really good. And if you take a look at our second variation. So yeah, uh, this one looks absolutely fantastic as well, right? Okay, so next, let's just go ahead and generate some landscape and see how it's going to turn out in our new stable cascade model. So yeah, for our landscape, I'm going to go ahead and say a stunning view of a desert under the starry night sky and all the elements and the, all the other things going to be the same. Let's just go ahead and generate this and see how it turns out. All right, wow. So take a look at these images, right? This looks absolutely fantastic. A stunning view of a desert under the starry night sky 
like check out the sky, the details, the desert, like each detail is top notch, right? And if you take a look at our second variation, so yeah, uh, this one looks really, really good as well, you guys, right? Okay, so now uh, next, let's just go ahead and create some 3D renders and see how are they gonna look in our new stable casket, okay? So for a 3D render, I'm gonna go ahead and say a 3D render of a medieval castle surrounded by a mod and all uh, those elements and negative prom is gonna be the same. Let's just go ahead and uh, decrease uh, the CFD value. Or you know what? I think for a 3D render, CFD value 4 is pretty good. Let's just generate this and see our output. All right, so our 3D renders are ready. Let's just go ahead and take a look into that. Okay, so for the first one, yeah, this looks really, really fantastic, you guys. So 3D render from Medieval Castle, surrounded by a mod. And the next variation, if you go ahead and explore that one, so yeah, this looks really, really good as well, right? Like, take a look at the detail in the water, the reflection, the trees, the clouds, the sky, everything is top-notch, right? Okay, so now, uh, next, let's just go ahead and see how the abstract art is going to turn out in the stable cascade. So for the prompt for that, I'm going to go ahead and say an abstract representation of a jazz music performance and all the elements. And for the CFG value, I'm going to go ahead and decrease it to 3 this time, generate it, and see how it turns out. All right, so take a look at this image. Wow, this looks really, really good, right? So an abstract representation of a jazz music performance, uh, DSLR quality, ultra sharp focus, and everything is top notch. And if you take a look at the second variation, so yeah, uh, this one looks really, really good as well, right? All right, last but not least, let's just go ahead and create anime character and see how it turns out in stable cascade. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my prompt for anime character that Luffy from One Piece performing a Gomu Gomu and No Pistol anime character and all the details. And the CMG value, let's just go ahead and increase that to 4. And rest, everything is going to be the same. Now, let's just go ahead and generate this and see how it looks. All right, so take a look at this image, you guys. Wow, this looks absolutely fantastic for our anime character, right? So we have Luffy from One Piece performing a Gomu Gomu no Pistol. And yeah, uh, this AI-generated image in Stable Cascade looks fantastic, right? So yeah, there you have it, guys. This was the exploration of uh, the new released uh, Stable Cascade in automatic 1111 so yeah uh, i hope you like this video and if you want to watch more videos like this stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one until then take care bye bye